my name is Sarah. I'm an independent student. I graduated in America. I'm here studying independently. Um, as you have stated, Jesus never does claim divinity in the Bible. In Revelation chapter 1, I can't read the whole chapter because it would take a very long time, but Jesus is speaking and he says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys of death and Hades. He also says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. These are also names of God written in the Old and New Testament. And I don't see how that does not show that Jesus is not genetically the Son of God, but spiritually the Son of God. The sister asked her question. She quoted Revelation chapter number one. She didn't give the verses. She's talking about the first 20 verses. And I'm Alpha and Omega is verse number 11. Revelation chapter number one, verse number 11, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I'm Alpha and Omega. So she says, just because Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says I'm Alpha and Omega, I'm first and the last, according to you, he is claiming divinity. Mark me. I had said there is not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God, or where he says, worship me. He didn't say. Now you are saying that because Jesus said I'm Alpha and Omega, therefore he's Almighty God, what do you mean Alpha and Omega? I'm the first and the last in what? Do you mean Jesus Christ was first in this world? No, he was born in a stable. Before him was his mother. There were many prophets that came before him. So surely he's not the first. Neither is he the last. In the Bible, it says, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he'll be coming. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that the year shall he speak. He shall glorify me. He shall show you things to come. Talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So what does this word Alpha and Omega mean? It does not mean that he's first and the last, actually, literally. Because there were many people who came before him and there were many people who came after him. What does it mean that in the law of God, whatever the messenger says, the law of God is first and last. At the time of Moses, Moses was Alpha and Omega as far as the law of God was concerned. Whatever he taught had to be followed. At the time of Jesus, Jesus cast peace be upon him. His teachings were Alpha and Omega. It had to be followed. At the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His teachings are Alpha and Omega. It is the first and the last. It does not mean that he claimed divinity. So therefore I said, any unambiguous statement, if you literally mean you are first and last, if you read the Bible, the Bible disagrees. There were many people who came before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He was born in the womb of the mother. And various people came after him also. So surely, sister, therefore I said, unambiguous, unequivocal statement. Hope that answers the question.